The Life of Adam and Eve. Please note that this reading is a synthesis of two versions. The narrative of the life of Adam and Eve, the first maid, revealed by God to Moses, his servant, when he received the tablets of the law of the covenant from the hand of the Lord, after he had been taught by the archangel Michael. When they were driven out of paradise, they made for themselves a tent and mourned for seven days, weeping in great sorrow. But after seven days they began to hunger and sought food to eat, but found none. Then Eve said to Adam, My Lord, I am hungry. Go and seek for us that we may eat. Perhaps the Lord God will consider us and pity us and call us back to the place we were before. And Adam rose and walked seven days over all that land and found no such food as they had in paradise. And Eve said to Adam, My Lord, would you kill me? Oh, that I would die. Then perhaps the Lord will bring you again into paradise, for it is because of me that the Lord God is angry with you. And Adam answered, Do not wish to speak such words, lest the Lord God bring on us some further curse. How is it possible that I should set loose my hand against my flesh? But rather let us rise and search for ourselves, how we might live and not weaken. And they walked, searching for nine days, and found nothing such as they had in paradise, but only such as animals eat. And Adam said to Eve, The Lord had portioned this for animals and beasts to eat, but for us there used to be food of angels. But it is just and fitting for us to lament in the sight of God who made us. Let us repent with a great pen penitence. Perhaps the Lord God will be forbearing and pity us and provide for us that we might live. And Eve said to Adam, My Lord, tell me, what is repentance and what kind of penitence should I do? lest by chance we impose on ourselves an effort which we cannot sustain, and the Lord not hear our prayers, and turn his face from us, because we did not keep our promise. My Lord, how much did you intend to repent, since I have brought toil and tribulation on you? And Adam said to Eve, You are not able to do so much as I, but do as much as you have strength for. I will spend forty days fasting, but you rise, and go to the Tigris River, and take a stone, and stand on it, on the water, as far as your neck, in the depths of the river, and let no speech come out of your mouth, because we are unworthy to entreat the Lord, since our lips are unclean from the illegal and forbidden tree. And stand in the water of the river thirty-seven days, but I will spend forty days in the water of the Jordan. Perhaps the Lord God will pity us. And Eve walked to the Tigris River, and did just as Adam told her. Similarly, Adam walked to the Jordan River and stood on a stone up to his neck in water. And Adam said, I tell you, water of the Jordan, mourn with me, and gather to me all swimming creatures which are in you, and let them surround me so as to lament together with me. Let them not mourn for themselves, but rather for me, because it is not they who have sinned, but I. At once all the living beings came and surrounded him, and the water of the Jordan stood its current not moving from that hour. Eighteen days went by. Then Satan was angry and transformed himself into the brightness of angels and went away to the Tigris River to Eve and found her weeping. And the devil himself, as if to grieve with her, began to weep and said to her, Step out of the river and cry no more. Cease now from sadness and sighs. Why are you and your husband Adam disturbed? The Lord has heard your sighs and accepts your repentance, and all we angels have entreated for you and interceded with the Lord, and has he sent me to bring you up from the water and give you food with which you had in paradise, and for which you have been lamenting. Now, therefore, come out of the water, and I will lead you to the place where your food has been prepared. Now when Eve heard this, she believed and came out of the water of the river, and her flesh was as grass from the cold of the water. And when she came out, she fell on the ground, and the devil raised her and led her to Adam. But when Adam saw her and the devil with her, he cried out with tears and said, Eve, Eve, where is the work of your penitence? How can you begin to be seduced by our enemy by whom we have been deprived of our dwelling in paradise and of spiritual joy? When Eve heard this, she knew that the devil had persuaded her to come out of the river and fell on her face to the ground, and her sorrow and sighing and lamenting were doubled. She cried out, saying, Woe to you, O devil! Why do you do assault to us for nothing? What have you to do with us? What have we done to you that you should pursue us with deceit? Why does your malice fall on us? 
We have, st have we stolen your glory and made you to be without honor? Why do you treacherously and enviously pursue us, O enemy, all the way to death? And the devil sighed and said, O Adam, all my enmity and envy and sorrow concern you, since because of you I am expelled and deprived of my glory, which I had in the heavens, in the midst of angels, and because of you I was cast out unto the earth. Adam answered, What have I done to you, and what is my blame with you, since you are neither harmed nor hurt by us? Why do you pursue us? The devil replied, Adam, what are you telling me? It is because of you that I have been thrown out of there. When you were created, I was cast out from the presence of God, and was sent out from the fellowship of the angels. When God blew into you the breath of life, and your countenance and the likeness were made in the image of God, Michael brought you to us and made us worship you in the sight of God. And the Lord God said, Behold, Adam, I have made you in our image and likeness. And Michael went out and called all the angels, saying, Worship the image of the Lord God, as the Lord God has instructed. And Michael himself worshipped first, and called me and said, Worship the image of God, Yahweh. And I answered, I do not worship Adam. And when Michael kept forcing me to worship, I said to him, Why do you compel me? I will not worship one inferior and subsequent to me. I am prior to him in creation. Before he was made, I was already made. He ought to worship me. When they heard this, the other angels who were under me refused to worship him. And Michael asserted, Worship the image of God, but if you will not worship, the Lord God will be wrathful with you. And I said, If he be wrathful with me, I will set my throne above the stars of heaven, and I will be like the Most High. And the Lord God was angry with me, and sent me with my angels out from our glory. And because of you, we were expelled into this world from our dwellings, and have been cast onto the earth. And immediately we were made to grieve, since we have been deprived of so great glory. And we were pained to see you in such bliss of delights. So with deceit I assailed your wife, and made you to be expelled through her from the joys of your bliss, as I have been expelled from my glory. Hearing this from the devil, Adam cried out with great weeping and said, O Lord my God, my life is in your hands. Remove far from me this my opponent, who seeks to destroy my soul, and give me his glory which he himself has forfeited. And immediately the devil disappeared from him. But Adam persisted forty days, standing in repentance in the water of the Jordan. And Eve said to Adam, You live on, my Lord. Life is granted to you, since you have done neither the first nor the second error. But I have been cheated and deceived, for I have not kept the command of God. And now separate from me the light of such life, and I will go to the sunset and stay there until I die. And she began to walk toward the west, and to mourn, and to weep bitterly with loud sighing. And she made there a shelter while she was three months pregnant. And when the time of her giving birth drew near, she began to be distressed with pains, and cried out to the Lord, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, help me. But neither was she heard, nor was the mercy of God around her. And she began to say to herself, Who will give the news to my Lord Adam? I beg you, O lights of heaven, when you return to the east, tell my lord Adam. However, at that very moment Adam said, Eve's complaint has come to me. Perhaps again the serpent has contended with her. And he went forth and came upon her in great distress. And Eve said, The moment I saw you, my lord, my pained soul was refreshed. And now implore the Lord God for me to hear you, and to have regard for me, and free me from my most awful pains. And Adam prayed to the Lord for Eve. And behold, twelve angels and two excellencies came and stood at the right and to the left of Eve. And Michael stood to the right and touched her from her face to the breast and said to Eve, Blessed are you, Eve, because of Adam. Since his prayers and utterances are many, I am sent to you that you might receive our help. Now rise and make ready to give birth. And she bore a son, and he was lustrous, and at once the infant rose, ran, and brought in his hands a reed and gave it to his mother. And his name was called Cain. And Adam brought Eve the child and led them to the east. And the Lord sent various seeds by the angel Michael and gave them to Adam and showed him how to work and till the ground so as to have produce by which they all, all their generations might live. For Eve later conceived and bore a son whose name was Abel. And Cain and Abel used to stay together. And Eve said to Adam, my Lord, while I was sleeping, I saw a vision, 
as if the blood of our son Abel was in the hand of Cain, who was gulping it down in his mouth. That is why I am sad. And Adam said, God forbid that Cain would kill Abel, but let us separate from each other and make separate places for them. And they made Cain a farmer and Abel a shepherd, that in this way they might be separated from each other. After this, Cain murdered Abel, at which time Adam was 130 years old while Abel, when he was murdered, was 122. After this, Adam knew his wife, and she bore a son and called his name Seth. And Adam said to Eve, See, I have sired a son in place of Abel, whom Cain struck down. And after Adam had become father of Seth, he lived 800 years and fathered 30 sons and 30 daughters, 63 altogether. And they were multiplied over the earth in their nations. Adam said to Seth, Listen, Seth, my son, and I will pass on to you what I heard and saw. After your mother and I had been driven out of paradise, while we were praying, Michael, the archangel and messenger of God, came to me, and I saw a chariot like the wind, and its wheels were fiery. I, I was carried off into the paradise of righteousness, and I saw the Lord sitting, and his appearance was unbearable flaming fire, and many thousands of angels were at the right and at the left of the chariot. I was disturbed when I saw this. Fear laid hold of me, and I worshipped in the presence of God on the face of the earth. And God said to me, Behold, you shall die, because you have disregarded the command of God, since you have listened rather to the voice of your wife, whom I gave into your power, that you might keep her in your will. But you listened to her and disregarded my words. When I heard these words of God, I fell down on the ground, worshipped the Lord, and said, My Lord, almighty and merciful God, holy and upright. Let not the name that reminds of your majesty be blotted out, but convert my soul, for I am dying, and my spirit will pass from my mouth. Cast me not from your presence, whom you formed from the clay of the earth, and do not withhold your grace from whom you have nurtured. For behold, your word came to me, and the Lord said to me, Because your days are numbered, you have been made to cherish knowledge. Therefore you shall not be abolished from your seed forever those that would serve me. Hearing these words, I prostrated myself to the ground and worshipped the Lord God, saying, You are the eternal and most high God, and all creatures give you honor and praise. You are the true light shining above all lights, living life, incomprehensibly great excellence. You, To you the spiritual powers give honor and praise. You perform among all humanity the miracles of your mercy. After I had worshipped the Lord, Michael, the archangel of God, immediately took hold of my hand and ejected me from the paradise of visitation and of God's command. And Michael held in his hand a rod and touched the waters which were around paradise, and they froze. I crossed over, and Michael with me, and he took me to the place from where he had seized me. After Adam had lived 930 years, he knew his days were at an end, and therefore said, let all my sons be gathered to me, that I may bless them before I die, and speak with them. And they assembled in three parts, in his sight at the oratory, where they used to worship the Lord God. And they asked him, What is it with you, Father, that you should gather us together, and why are you lying on your bed? And Adam answered and said, My sons, I am sick with pains. And all his sons said to him, What is it, Father, to be sick with pains? Then his son Seth said, Lord, perhaps you have longed for the fruit of paradise which you used to eat, and that is why you were lying in sadness. Tell me, and I will go to the vicinity of the entrances to paradise, and will put my dust on my head and throw myself to the ground before the gates of paradise, and mourn with great lamentation and treating the Lord. Perhaps he will hear me and send his angel to bring me the fruit which you desire. Adam answered and said, No, my son, I do not long for that, but I have weakness and great pain in my body. Seth responded, What is pain, O Lord Father? I do not know. Do not hide it from us, but tell us. And Adam answered and said, Listen to me, my sons. When God made us, me and your mother, and placed us in paradise and gave us every tree bearing fruit to eat, he forbade us, saying, Regarding the tree of knowledge of good and evil which is in the midst of paradise, do not eat of it. Moreover, God gave a part of paradise to me and a part to your mother. The trees of the eastern part and over against the north he gave to me, and to your mother he gave the southern and western parts. The Lord God appointed two angels to guard us, 
The hour came when the angels ascended to worship in the presence of God. Immediately the adversary, the devil, found opportunity while the angels were away and deceived your mother, so that she ate of the illicit and forbidden tree. And she ate and gave to me. And immediately the Lord God was angry with us, and the Lord said to me, Because you have forsaken my commandment, and have not kept my word, which I said before you, behold, I will bring upon your body seventy plagues, and you shall be racked with various pains from the top of your head and the eyes and ears down to the nails of your feet and in each separate limb. These he considered to be the scourge of pain from one of the trees. Moreover, the Lord sent all these to me and to all our generations. Adam said this to all his sons while, they were seized, while he was seized with great pains. And he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Why should I suffer misery and endure such agony? And when she saw him weeping, Eve herself began to weep, saying, O Lord, my God, transfer his pain to me, since it is I who sinned. And Eve said to Adam, My Lord, give me a portion of your pain, for the guilt has come to you from me. And Adam said to Eve, Rise, and go with my son Seth to the regions of paradise, and put dust on your heads, and prostrate yourselves to the ground, and mourn in the sight of God. Perhaps he will have mercy, and send his angel to the tree of his mercy from which flows the oil of life, and will give you a little of it with which to anoint me, that I might have rest from these pains by which I am wasting away. And Seth and his mother went toward the gates of paradise, and while they were walking, behold, suddenly there came a serpent, a beast, and attacked the, and bit Seth. And when Eve saw it, she cried out and said, Woe is me, for I am cursed, since I have not kept the command of the Lord. And Eve said to the serpent in a loud voice, Cursed beast! How is it that you were not afraid to throw yourself at the image of God, but have dared to attack it? And how is it you have made your teeth strong? The beast answered in a human voice, O oh Eve, is not our malice against you? Is not our fury against you? Tell me, Eve, how is your mouth open that you ate of the fruit which the Lord God commanded you not to eat? Now, however, however you are not able to bear it if I begin to reproach you. Then Seth said to the beast, May the Lord God rebuke you. Stop. Be quiet. Close your mouth. Cursed enemy of truth. Chaotic destroyer. Stand back from the image of God until the day when the Lord shall order you to be brought to judgment. And the beast said to Seth, See, I stand back from the presence of the image of God, as you have said. Immediately he left Seth, who was wounded by his teeth. But Seth and his mother walked toward the regions of paradise for the oil of mercy, and to anoint the sick Adam. And they arrived at the gates of paradise, took dust from the earth, and put it on their heads, prostrated themselves to the ground on their faces, and began to mourn with loud sighs, begging the Lord to pity Adam in his pains, and to send his angel to give them oil from the tree of mercy. But when they had prayed and entreated for many hours, behold, the angel of Michael appeared to them, saying, I have been sent to you from the Lord. I am I have been said by the Lord over the bodies of men. I say to you, Seth, man of God, do not weep, praying and begging for the oil of the tree of mercy to anoint your father, Adam, for the pains of his body. Truly I say to you that you were by no means able to take from it except in the last days. But you, Seth, go to your father, Adam, for the span of his life is completed. Six days from now his soul shall leave his body, and as it leaves you shall see great wonders in heaven and on the earth and in the lights of heaven. Having said this, Michael immediately withdrew from Seth, and at Eve and Seth turned back and brought them ten aromatics, nard, crocus, calamine, and cinnamon. And when Seth and his mother reached Adam, they told him how the beast, the serpent, bit Seth. And Adam said to Eve, What have you done? You brought upon us a great wound, transgressions and sin in all our generations. And you shall relate what you have done to your children after my death. For those who rise up from us shall labor, not being adequate, but failing. And they shall curse us, saying, Our parents, who were from the beginning, have brought upon us all evils. When Eve heard this, she began to weep and groan. Then Eve said to them, Listen, all my children and my children's children, and I will tell you how our enemy deceived us. It happened while we were guarding paradise, each his portion allotted from God. Now I was watching in my share, the south and west, 
And the devil came to, into Adam's portion, where the male and animals were. Since God divided the animals among us, and all the males he gave to your father, and all the females to me, and each of us kept his own. And the devil spoke to the serpent, saying, Rise, and come to me, and I will tell you something to your advantage. And then the serpent came to him, and the devil said to him, I hear that you are wiser than all the beasts, so I came to observe you. I found you greater than all the beasts, and they associate with you, but yet you are prostrate in the very least. So why do you eat the weeds of Adam and not the fruit of paradise? Rise and come and let us make him to be cast out of paradise through his wife, just as we were cast out through him. The serpent said to him, I fear lest the Lord be wrathful to me. The devil said to him, Do not fear, only become my vessel and I will speak a word through your mouth by which you will be able to deceive him. And immediately he suspended himself from the walls of paradise about the time when the angels of God went up to worship. Then Satan came in the form of an angel and sang hymns to God as the angels. And I saw him bending over the wall like an angel, and he said to me, Are you Eve? And I said to him, I am. And he said to me, What are you doing in paradise? I replied, God placed us to guard it and eat from it. The devil answered me through the mouth of the serpent, you do well, but you do not eat of every plant. And I said to him, Yes, we eat from every plant except only one, which is in the midst of paradise, concerning which God commanded us not to eat of it, lest you shall most surely die. Then the serpent said to me, May God live, for I am grieved over you, that you are like animals, for I do not wish you, wish you to be ignorant, but rise, come and eat, and observe the glory of the tree. And I said to him, I fear lest God be angry with me, just as he told us. He said to me, Fear not, for the very time you eat, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God's, knowing good and evil. But since God knew this, that you would be like him, he begrudged you and said, Do not eat of it, but come to the plant and see its great glory. And I turned to the plant and saw its great glory, and I said to him, It is pleasing to consider with the eyes, yet I was afraid to take the fruit, and he said to me, Come, I will give it to you. Follow me. And I opened the gate for him, and he entered into paradise, passing through in front of me. After he had walked a little while, he turned and said to me, I have changed my mind and will not allow you to eat. He said these things, wishing in the end to entice and ruin me. And he said to me, Swear to me that you are giving it also to your husband. And I said to him, I do not know by what sort of oath I should swear to you. However, that which I do know I tell you. By the throne of the Lord and the cherubim and the tree of life, I shall give it to my husband also to eat. When he had received the oath from me, he went, climbed the tree, and sprinkled his evil poison on the fruit which he gave me to eat with his covetousness. For covetousness is the origin of every sin. And I bent the branch toward the earth, took of the fruit, and ate. And at that very moment my eyes were open, and I knew that I was naked of the righteousness which with, with which I had been clothed. And I wept, saying, why have you done this to me, that I have been estranged from my glory with which I was clothed? And I also wept about the oath. But that one came also down from the tree and vanished. I looked for leaves in my region so that I may cover my shame, but I did not find any from the trees of paradise, since while I ate the leaves of all the trees of my portion fell, except those of the fig tree only. And I took its leaves and made for myself skirts, and they were from the same plants of which I ate. And I cried out with a loud voice, saying, Adam, Adam, where are you? Rise, come to me, and I will show you a great mystery. And when, and when your father came, I spoke to him unlawful words of transgression, such as brought us down from great glory. For when he came, I opened my mouth, and the devil was speaking, and I began to admonish him, saying, Come, my lord Adam, listen to me, and eat of the fruit of the tree which God told us not to eat from, and it, you shall be as God. Your father answered and said, I fear lest God be angry with me. And I said to him, Do not fear, for as soon as you eat, you shall know good and evil. Then I quickly persuaded him. He ate, and his eyes were open. And he also realized his nakedness. And he said to me, O evil woman, why have you wrought destruction among us? You have estranged me from the glory of God. And in the same hour we heard the archangel Michael sounding his trumpet, calling the angels, saying, Thus says the Lord, Come with me into paradise, and hear the sentence which I pronounce on Adam. And as we heard the archangel sounding the trumpet, we said, 
Behold, God is coming into paradise to judge us. We were afraid and hid. And God returned to paradise, seated on a chariot of cherubim, and the angels were praising him. When God came into paradise, all the plants, both of the portion of Adam and also of my portion, bloomed forth and were established. And the throne of God was made ready where the tree of life was. And God called Adam, saying, Adam, where did you hide, thinking that I would not find you? Can a house hide from its builder? Then your father answered and said, O oh Lord, we are not hiding, thinking that it would not, we would not be discovered by you, but rather I am afraid, because I am naked, and I stood in awe of your might, O oh Lord. God said to him, Who showed you that you were naked, unless you have forsaken my commandment, which I delivered to you to keep? Then Adam remembered the word which I spoke to him when I wanted to deceive him. I will make you safe from God. And he turned to me and said, Why have you done this? And I also remembered the word of the serpent, and I said, The serpent deceived me. God said to Adam, Because you transgressed my commandment and listened to your wife, cursed is the ground in your labors. For when you work it, it will not give its strength. It shall yield you brambles and thistles, and with sweat on your brow you shall eat your bread. You will suffer many a hardship. You will grow weary and not rest. Be afflicted with bitterness and not taste sweetness. Be oppressed by heat and burdened by cold. You will toil much and not gain wealth. You will grow fat and finally not be. And the animals over which you ruled will rise up against you in disorder because you did not keep my commandment. Turning to me, the Lord said to me, since you have listened to the serpent and ignored my commandment, you shall suffer birth, birth pains and unspeakable pains. With much trembling you shall bear children, and on that occasion you shall come near to lose your life from your great anguish and pains. And you shall confess and say, Lord, Lord, save me, and I will never again turn to the sin of the flesh. And by this, according to your word, I will judge you because of the enmity which the enemy has placed in you. And yet you shall turn again to your husband, and he shall rule over you. And after he had told me these things, he spoke to the serpent in great wrath, saying to him, Since you have done this, and become an ungrateful vessel, so far as to lead astray the careless of heart, accursed are you beyond all wild beasts. You shall be deprived of food which you used to eat. You shall eat dust every day of your life. You shall crawl on your belly, and you shall be deprived of your hands as well as your feet. There shall be left for you neither ear nor wing on nor one limb of all that which you enticed them in your depravity and caused them to be cast out of paradise. And I will put enmity between you and his seed, and he shall beware of your head and you his heel until the day of judgment. Having said these things, he ordered his angels to cast us out of paradise. While we were being expelled and lamenting, your father Adam begged the angels, let me be a little while, so that I may beseech God that he might have compassion and pity me, for I alone have sinned. And they ceased driving him out. And Adam cried out with weeping and said, Forgive me, Lord, what I have done. Then the Lord said to his angels, Why have you stopped driving Adam out of paradise? Is the guilt mine, or did I judge badly? And then the angels fell on the ground and worshipped the Lord, saying, You are righteous, Lord, and you judge uprightly. And the Lord turned to Adam and said, from now on I will not allow you to be in paradise. And Adam answered and said, Lord, give me from the tree of life that I might eat before I am cast out. Then the Lord spoke to Adam, You shall not take from it, for it was appointed to the cherubim and the flaming sword which turns to guard it because of you, that you might not taste of it and be immortal forever, but that you might have the strife which the enmity has, enemy has placed in you. But when you come out of paradise, if you guard yourself from all evil, preferring death to it at the time of the resurrection, I will raise you again, and then there shall be given to you from the tree of life, and you shall be immortal forever. When the Lord had said these things, he ordered us to cast out of paradise. And your father wept before the angels opposite paradise, and the angels said to him, What do you want us to do for you, Adam? Your father answered and said to the angels, See, you are casting me out. I beg you, let me take fragrances from paradise, so that after I have gone out, I might bring an offering to God, so that God will hear me. And they came to God and said, Jael, eternal king, command that fra fragrant incenses from paradise be given to Adam. And God ordered Adam to come, so that he might take aromatic fragrances out of paradise for his sustenance. 
When the angels allowed him, he gathered both kinds, crocus, nard, reed, cinnamon, and other seeds for his food. And these he took and went out of paradise, and so we came to be on the earth. Now then, my children, I have shown you the way in which we were deceived. But you, watch yourselves so that you do not forsake the good. When she had said these things in the midst of her sons, and while Adam was lying ill, having one more day before going out of the body, Eve said to Adam, Why are you dying and I live? And how long have I to live after you die? Tell me. And then Adam said to Eve, Do not be concerned about this, for you shall not be long after me, but we shall both die alike, and you yourself shall be laid in my place. But when I die, leave me alone, and let no one touch me until the angel of the Lord shall say something about me. For God will not forget me, but will seek his own vessel, which he has formed, but rather rise to pray to God, until I shall give back my spirit into the hands of the one who has given it. For we know not how we shall meet our Maker, whether he shall be angry with us, or turn to have mercy on us. Then Eve rose and went out and fell on the ground and said, I have sinned, O God. I have sinned, O Father of all, I have sinned against you, I have sinned against your chosen angels, I have sinned against the cherubim, I have sinned against your steadfast throne, I have sinned, Lord, I have sinned much, I have sinned before you, and all sin in creation has come about through me. While Eve was still on her knees praying, behold, the angel of mankind came to her and lifted her up, saying, Rise, Eve, from your repentance, for behold, Adam, your husband, has gone out of his body. Rise, and see his spirit born up to meet its maker. And Eve rose, and put her hand on her face, and the angel said to her, Lift yourself from earthly things. And Eve gazed into heaven, and saw a chariot of light coming drawn by four radiant eagles, of which it is not possible for anyone born of the womb to tell their glory, or to see their faces. And angels went before the chariot. When they came to the place where your father Adam was lying, the chariot stood, and the seraphim were between your father and the chariot. I myself saw golden censers and three bowls, and behold, all the angels with frankincense and the censers and the bowls came to the altar and breathed on them. And the fumes of the incense hid the sky, and the angels fell down and worshipped God, crying out and saying, Holy Jael, forgive, for he is your image in the work of your holy hands. And then I, Eve, saw two great and fearful mysteries standing before God, and I wept from fear and cried out to my son Seth, saying, Rise, Seth, from the body of your father Adam, and come to me, that you may see the things which no eye has ever seen. Then Seth got up and came to his mother, and he said to her, What is the matter? Why are you crying? She said to him, Look up with your eyes and see the seven heavens open, and see with your eyes how the body of your father lies on its face, and all the holy angels are with him, praying for him and saying, Forgive him, O Father, for he is your image. So then, my child Seth, what shall this be? When sh will he be given over into the hands of our unseen Father and God? And two are the two dark-skinned persons assisting at the prayer of your father. Seth said to his mother, These are the sun and the moon, and they themselves fall down and pray for my father Adam. And Eve said to him, And where is their light, and why have they become dark? Seth said to her, they are not able to shine before the light of all, and this is why the light is hid from them. While Seth was speaking to his mother, an angel sounded the trumpet, and the angels who were lying on their faces stood up and cried out with a fearful voice, saying, Blessed be the glory of the Lord over his works. He has had mercy on Adam, the works of his, work of his hands. When the angels had shouted out these things, one of the six-winged seraphim came and carried Adam off, to the lake of Asheron, and washed him three times in the presence of God. He lay three hours, and so the Lord of all, sitting on his holy throne, stretched out his hands and took Adam and handed him over to the archangel Michael, saying to him, Take him up into paradise, to the third heaven, and leave him there until that great and fearful day which I am about to establish for the world. And archangel Michael took Adam and brought him away and left him, just as God told him at the pardoning of Adam. Now after all these things, the archangel asked about attending to the remains, and God gave orders that all the angels should gather before him, each according to his rank. And all the angels came together, some with censers and others with trumpets, 
And the Lord of hosts mounted up, and the winds drawing him, and the cherubim being above the winds. And the angels of heaven were leading him, and when they came to the place where the body of Adam was, they took it. And they came into the paradise, and all the plants of paradise were stirred, so that all those born of Adam became drowsy from the fragrance except Seth. So he was born according to the appointment of God. Now the body of Adam was lying on the ground in paradise, and Seth was mourning greatly over him. And the Lord God said, Adam, why did you do this? If you had kept my commandment, those who brought you down into this place would not have rejoiced. Yet now I tell you that their joy shall be turned into sorrow, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. And when that happens, I will establish you and your dominion on the throne of your seducer. But that one shall be cast into this place, so that you might sit above him. Then he himself and those who listen to him shall be condemned, and they shall greatly mourn and weep when they see you sitting on his glorious throne. Then he spoke to the archangel Michael, Go into paradise in the third heaven and bring me three cloths of linen and silk. And God said to Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, and Raphael, Cover Adam's body with the cloths and bring oil from the oil of fragrance and pour it on him. And thus they did and prepared his body. And the Lord spoke, Let also Abel's body be brought. And they brought other linens and prepared him also, since he was unattended from the day when his brother Cain murdered him. For the evil Cain took much care to hide Abel's body, but could not. For the earth did not receive the body, saying, I shall not receive another body until the mound of earth which was taken from me and formed shall come to me. Then the angels took up the body and set it on the rock until the time of his father died. And both were buried according to the command of God in the regions of paradise, in the place from which God had found the dust. And God sent seven angels into paradise, and they brought many fragrances and set them in the earth. And so they took the two bodies and buried them in the place which they dug and built. And God called Adam and said, Adam, Adam. And the body answered from the ground and said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, I told you that you were dust, and to dust you shall return. Now I promise to you the resurrection. I shall raise you on the last day in the resurrection with every man of your seed. After these words, God made a triangular seal and sealed the tomb in order that no one might do anything to him for six days, when his rib would return to him. Then the Lord and the angels went to their place, and after six days Eve also died. Indeed, six days after Adam died, Eve, aware that she would die, gathered all her sons and daughters. Seth with thirty brothers and thirty sisters, and Eve said to them all, Listen to me, my children, and I will tell you that I and your father transgressed the command of God. And the archangel Michael said to us, Because of your collusion, our Lord will bring over your race the wrath of his judgment, first by water and then by fire. By these two the Lord will judge the whole human race. But listen to me, my children. Make now tablets of stone and other tablets of clay, and write in them all my life and your father's, which you have heard and seen from us. If he should judge our race by water, the tablets of earth will dissolve, and the tablets of stone will remain. But if he should judge our race by fire, the tablets of stone will break up, and those of clay will be thoroughly baked. While living, she herself wept about her death, because she did not know where her body was to be placed. For while the Lord was in paradise, when they buried Adam, both she and her children slept, except for Seth, and as I said. And Eve, in the hour of her death, implored that she might be buried where Adam, her husband, was, saying, My master, Lord, and God of all excellence, do not separate me from the body of Adam, for you made me from his members. But rather, consider me worthy, even me, unworthy and sinful, to be buried near his body. And just as I was with him in paradise, and not separated even after the transgression, so also let no one separate us now. Therefore, after she prayed, she looked up into heaven, rose, beat her breast, and said, God of all, receive my spirit. And immediately she gave up her spirit to God. When she had died, the archangel Michael stood by, and three angels came and took her body and buried it where the body of Abel was. And the archangel Michael said to Seth, Thus you shall prepare for burial each man who dies until the day of resurrection, and do not mourn more than six days. On the seventh day rest and be glad in it, 
For on that day both God and we angels rejoice in the migration from the earth of a righteous soul. And when he had said these things, the angel went up into heaven, glorifying God and saying, Alleluia, to whom be glory and power forever and ever. Then Seth made tablets of stone and clay and wrote in them the life of his father Adam and his mother Eve, what he had heard from them and his eyes had seen. And he put the tablets in the middle of the house of his father in the oratory where he used to pray to God. And after the flood, those written tablets were seen by many persons, but were read by no one. The wise Solomon, however, saw the writings and was entreating the Lord, and an angel of the Lord appeared to him, saying, I am he who held the hand of Seth, so that he wrote with his finger on two stone. And you shall be wise in writing, so that you may know and understand all that is contained on the stones, and where the place of prayer was, where Adam and Eve used to worship the Lord God. And it is fitting for you to build a temple of the Lord, the house of prayer at that place. Then Solomon completed the temple of the Lord God and called forth those Achillean documents, that is to say, written without the knowledge of the words by the finger of Seth, his hand being held by the angel of the Lord. And on the stones themselves was found what Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied before the flood, speaking of the coming of Christ. Behold, the Lord will come in his holiness to pronounce judgment on all, and to convict all the impious of their works, which they spoke of him, sinners and impious, murmurers and irreligious, who walked according to their lust, and whose mouth has spoken pride. <clears throat>